So I need some curves and I need some straights. Having the proper tools really yeah, does help. Them? It makes okay. a big difference in what you're doing. Um, having different combs to do different things becomes very important. So um, don't be afraid to add to, to your equipment. You know how you're a scissor junkie? You need to become a comb junkie. Well, and it's like a mechanic. They don't have just one wrench. They don't just have one screwdriver. They have several kinds. Okay. And we need to do the same too. So I want to comb all this up. And I take my straights. And first I'm going to just even out her top line. It's okay, Judy. There you go. And you see how Lisa's keeping her hand nice and straight as she comes up the top line? Because I'm just neatening up what that snap-on comb didn't take. And by keeping her hand level, she's not going to put a, a dip in the top line. She's not going to arch the back. A little bit, so. She's actually going to keep it nice and, and she, level. And she, when you touch her tail, she does like to tuck her butt. Tuck her butt. And she's not roach back. So sometimes what you can do is like tickle the top of their spine. And that'll help flatten their back back out. There you go. But then but take then your you comb. But then you have to comb it back up. Take your comb and fix that. Don't just go ahead and scissor. You won't be able to see what you're doing. Okay, so now I'm going to start the back side of my tail. First of all, I need I can take this tip off. I don't need all that. Good girl. I start up at the top and I'm using my straights coming down and I want it to come down like I'm coming across a tabletop. Okay, because from the back, I need to set in so that she has butt behind her tail. Okay, so I need to set that in there so it doesn't look like her butt is coming out her rectum. Or her tail is coming out of, did I say that right? I don't know. I'm confused now. So top of my carrot is thinner. Work my way down. And by doing that too, Lisa is leaving the tail connected to the body. It's not going to okay. look like the tail was put on separate. Okay, so now I want to try and hold her tail at a 45 degree angle. And you have to be systematic when you work and scissor on a dog. It's like putting together pieces of a puzzle. So now I want my curve backwards and I'm going to hold them at a 45 degree angle as I come down and blend this into my body. And again, there's not going to be that separation at... You almost got your fingers no, cut off. No, I was off. good. You, you're not going to have that separation. Everything is one extension. So as Lisa puts her puzzle together, everything is going to stay together. Again, I have some hair sticking up here. So I want to blend those in. Okay, so now before I, and I'm saving the other side for Sue to do. Okay, I want to, can you hand me the scissor spray? Absolutely. Okay, before I go back and do anything, I want to set in my foot. Because setting okay. in my foot helps me gauge the rest of the length of my dog's leg. Because if you start up here and you work your way down, we have a natural tendency to make a V and then we get pointed toes. Okay, now in the carry blue standard, it calls for them to have small feet. So I don't want to leave big feet. <laughs> She's got grass. 
So I'm going to comb everything down. And anything that hangs over the pads, I'm going to cut flush. And I'm using my curves. Okay, make sure you keep those scissors flat because if you don't, you're going to nick your pad. Their pad, not yours. You don't have pads. I'm going to cut the front of my toes first. Okay, because by setting in the front of my foot and the back of my foot, I'm not going to get a pinched foot. Okay, again, I want it to come right to the nails and work my way around. Nice and tight. It's okay that my nails show a little bit. Okay, she keeps trying to move her foot away, so I'm going to kind, kind of lift up her other back leg. And I have my finger pushed on her thigh here so that she kind of keeps that leg still. Okay, because she kind of acts like a typical toy pooty. It's okay, baby. It's okay. Okay. She goes, I don't need nobody holding me. So I'm going to comb all this up. Make sure I have a nice beveled foot so that she looks like she's up on her toes. And I know for some of you, you're saying, well, sh but she's not a real terrier. She's not an actual Carrie Blue. And that's okay. You're still trying to achieve the look. And part of that is getting some of the characteristics that you would see if she were an actual Carrie Blue. The tighter foot, the more she looks up on her toe, like Lisa's trying to set in, the carrot tail. All of this becomes part of the characteristic of a Carrie Blue. So if you achieve that and you can, you can get her to look like that, your client will be able to, to tell the difference. They will see the, the characteristics of the carry blue. When she walks down the street, others will see it. They'll be asking, what kind of dog is that? Because she's, you know, anybody that knows what a carry blue looks like know that they're bigger. Okay, so now I want to reset in her rear angulation. Good job, baby girl. So I'm just going Good over job. that line that Sue set in with the clipper. Okay, so that you see that she's got some nice lines going there. Okay, when you look at a carry from the back, they should have a U-shaped rear. So I'm going to have my rear come out just a tiny bit farther than my back. Good job, baby. Okay, and I switch to my straights because I want to set in straight lines. Okay, and I don't get everything perfectly scissored on my first go around. All I'm doing right now is just setting in what I want to do. Mm -hmm. Huh? She asked where the books for people? Yeah, they're for you. Okay, so now I want to turn my leg. Blend in down here. I haven't touched the top of that leg yet. Okay. Good job, little girl. You're doing so good now. You're doing so good. You're getting okay, so, so great. Okay, so I don't want to take off a lot of hair up here, but I do need to shape that and blend that in. And they definitely need the knee here to counterbalance the angulation. 
That's right, because if you have angulation here and don't have it here, she's going to look like a pirate. She's going to look like she has a peg leg. It's kind of that yin and yang thing you've got going on. So what you do to one side, you have to counterbalance the other. Okay, normally when I do the whole dog myself, I do back leg, back leg, front leg, front leg, and then my underline. But since Sue's going to do the other side, I'm just going to jump over to my front leg. And the reason why I go from side to side and front to front and all that is because sometimes by the time I work in a circle, by the time I get to this last back leg, I've kind of forgotten what I've done over here. And I usually, then my legs aren't in balance. I go, right, I go back, back, front, front. <laughs> and then you can set, set in your, your underline and stuff. Once you've gotten those legs set in, it's easier then to set in your underline. Okay, the, now a carry blue should have a short loin. So actually, I want this piece of fur here in the loin area to be part of the back leg. And I'm going to neaten up my... What do you see over there? What do you see? She doesn't see anything yet. Yes, she does. She sees something. She puts her ears up. She's looking at something. Okay. It's okay. Okay, so now I don't have it perfect yet. But when I do my front leg, I'm constantly looking back at my other leg to see what's going on. Can I spray? Mm -hmm. I love these continuous misters. And don't be afraid to find a good grooming spray that you like and use it. It really does help with your finish work. It's okay. All good right. job, little girl. Good job. Make sure we have all this combed down. It's okay. See, I'm kind of holding her up at her elbow. It's okay. All I have to say is thank God I don't have to clean her feet because I bet she's not a good girl for that. So again, keep my scissors flat. One nice tight on the bottom. Any of that long hair that pulls through my toes. And I'm going to trim real close to her front foot there. It's okay. So I'm almost like etching out her front foot. All the way around. Pick this back up. You know, and, and as shake it out. those of you that are watching the video, um, when, once it gets posted and stuff, you have to remember, you know, yes, she looks a little afraid. Um, it, it looks like Lisa is struggling with her, but she's really not. Um, the dog is very unsure of herself. And some people, some groomers might say, maybe the easier thing is just cut her down, make her short, don't worry about it. Or maybe they wouldn't even do her at all if they're struggling a little bit with her. But nothing Lisa is doing to her hurts her, um, even though she might be a little afraid of it. Nothing is hurting her. Nothing is causing any pain or suffering or anything like that. So if you continue on, the only thing you're going to do for this dog is build a little more confidence. When she's done the next time, provided she's not let go six months, you're, you're going to see a difference in her attitude when she's put back on a table and somebody starts to work on her.
The, the easiest way to describe it, you know, when somebody says, oh my gosh, you're hurting him, he doesn't like it, we need to stop. If you have a child that you take in to have their hair cut for the first time or the second time, what are they going to do? They are going to cry. They're going to scream. They're going to move their head all over the place because that child doesn't know any different. This dog in its head cannot say, oh, she's just cutting my hair off. It's no problem at all. You know, and, and other people will say, well, it's up to the owner to train their dog for this. Owners don't know what to do. So it, part of it does fall on us to train them how we want them to act. And as long as you're not getting rough or screaming at her the whole time. Screaming you, at her does no good it, anyway. It does no good. It, it ap absolutely is a hindrance more than a help. But if Lisa continues to work and just gets this all done, she will see at, by the end of the groom that nothing Lisa did hurt her. And it does build her confidence. And unfortunately, with this kind of coat, she needs to be groomed all her life. How often that gets done is up to the owner, but... But it's up to us to also yes. inform them that if they don't have them done on a regular basis, this is how this dog is always going to act. But sending her home isn't the answer either. Um, that, that sends a dog a lot of mixed signals. Um, they also can learn that if I misbehave, I get the ultimate prize. I get to go home. It's a win-win for the dog. And nobody's touching her. But if you be persistent and power through it, everybody's going to be a lot happier. So again, I want to make sure she's up on her, on her piggies. So I want her to, that to come up off the table. And if I see her two center nails, that's okay. And I follow through with my shoulder and my neck area. Because that, to me, is all part of coming down into my leg and helping me set that in. Okay, your comb is your best friend. You can never comb too much, in my opinion. Yeah, don't don't use your scissors to brush up all the hair. That that's a no no. I I see a lot of groomers take their scissor and just fluff it up like that. You need to use your comb. That's what pulls out all the hairs and it really does give you a better finish. And now when I'm scissoring, I will keep continue to kind of shake my leg a little bit or her leg. I look stupid if I do it. Um, I see you it, shake your leg all the it, time. It helps put that coat back into where I want it to lay. Okay, make sure I cut the elbow hair off so that I kind of separate that leg from the body. Okay, because their underline is behind the front leg. It's not even width and it's not in front of. Okay, so we're getting a nice shape to that front leg. Come down with my straights. And you can see, I, those of you that have watched from the beginning, how much more confidence this dog is getting as she's, she's feeling like she's getting done. Lisa's moving from back to front. Um, sometimes dogs get to know certain patterns um, and, and they know when it's getting close. And you can, you can tell she's just much more relaxed than when yeah, we first she's started. she's not panting anymore. She's standing, she's, she's just feeling better. And this is all stuff we, we need to pay attention to. I think one thing we also need to pay attention to is if you have more than one groomer in a shop, see how that dog reacts to somebody else. So if you have a dog that, that 
Like a few of my dogs don't like me because I am a stronger personality. I have that terrier mentality. She so does. So I real. have some of the dogs that they, they're like, yeah, no. So when I was working with Sue, I'd say, okay, Sue, you try this dog. And that dog would be good for Sue. And I had a Scotty Cocker mix. Fletcher. His name was Fletcher. Fletcher. And he, he could be a handful. And he despised Sue. And he thought he could walk all over Sue. One day when Sue was doing him, I got to the salon late. Sue had a muzzle on him when I came in because he needed to be muzzled. He wanted to get Sue so bad, he forced his jaws open and ripped the fabric muzzle. But he, yet, he was that Fletcher, bad. He was a bad boy. Fletcher could sit on my table and I would not have to muzzle him. He'd let me know he had teeth, but he respected me enough not to try and bite me. So try another groomer in your salon. It's like when we meet a person, we instantly go, I don't like him. And nine times out of ten, we don't like them because their personality is like ours. And we pick out our own flaws. Okay, so those are my two little legs. Sue's going to do her legs. Okay, but let's show. I don't know if she's going to stay here for the whole groom, so let's show. Oh, well, then I'll this, trim, well, then I'll yeah, trim, trim in her this, underline. Yeah, trim in the underline and that side of her neck. And that way, you know, it gets redundant. I'm just saying. Well, you groom differently than I do, so it's like grooming a whole new dog. Okay, so I'm going to neaten this up, flatten it out. Okay. Now, Carrie Blue's underline is not like a poodle's. Okay, it's not curvy. It's not elegant and beautiful like a poodle. It's a strong line. That's the only way I can describe it for you to remember it. But when you think of terriers, there's nothing soft about terriers. Terriers are who they are. They don't, they don't camouflage it. They don't hide it. They're kind of like me. That, that, now that is really the truth because mm -hmm. she's like that. But she lives with six smooth fox terriers. So she's the mama and she, they know it. Okay, the purpose of their underline is to come to their elbow. Come here, little girl. Come here. See, you can put that one down too. Dee -dee. There you go. There you go. There you go. Good job. Good job, little Judy. So These her little underline people goes, names. goes from the last rib down. So I need to keep this hair back here. Follow that into the back leg. And okay. it gives you that nice underline. Okay, come here. All right. So now we're going to set in the top of the head and part of the neck. Okay, I need to trim around <laughs> the ear. Notice how I took the bad side of the ear. Thank God. I took the bad ear. I, I appreciate that. I don't. Because with my luck, I'll nick it. You won't. Okay, so I have my finger right there so I don't catch that ear edge. Okay, if anything, I'll cut my fingertip off. Plus, if you notice, Lisa is scissoring away from the dog. This way, if she does freak out, she's not going to turn her head into the point of the scissor. So by Lisa going away from the, the face, it's gonna make it much safer. Good girl. Okay. She's got dog food stuck here. She had a snack. She had a snack on the way. <laughs> That's right. Snacks Save. for later. Snacks for later. Do you need the spray? No. Nope. No. Nope. 
Okay, so now I need to flatten out her back skull. But you see how Lisa is... tilted that head so that she can make that flat plane more visible to herself? So as she's scissoring it, she can, she can follow the line she kind of laid in for herself and go right up to the occiput. Which, you know, if you guys don't know your structure or your body parts, you need to know these things. Okay, because it's all part of structure and it's all part of what we should be, it's okay what we should know how to do, and that's hide flaws. Okay, we should know what it means, like if a dog has a fiddle front or if they're, if they're cow hawk, because that all depends on how we're gonna pick up that foot to trim the nails, to cut down the front leg with our clippers. I worked with a groomer for two years, and when I would use the term occiput, she didn't know what I was talking about. And finally, after two years, she said, what is an occiput? It's the little <laughs> bone up here. Well, you don't have one up there. Ours is down here. Yeah. 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 Yes. On the dog. But for two years, I would say, you got to start behind the occiput. She's, she didn't know what I was talking about. And finally she goes, what is an occiput? And I'm like, oh my gosh. I said, you needed to ask that two years ago. <laughs> so we had a lesson in anatomy and structure. And, and, and even though, you know, you are pet groomers, if you're reading uh, notes from the grooming table or Jody Murphy's grooming book, I like on the Look Irish Setter, it says they Look should have a pronounced you. occiput. If you don't know what it is, how can you do it? That would like be to me going to a hairdresser that didn't know our bone structure or anything like that to, to do our hair. And they do know all the bones of our face and that's why they can trim our hair to fit the structure of our face. And then we can too, if we know the structure of a dog. And when we read the breed profile, it makes more sense to us. Okay, so when I do the, the head and neck, or the neck, I want her head in a downward position and I'll put my hand around her muzzle. Now it's very loose. I'm not hanging onto her so she can't breathe. But if, if you can see this line, Lisa is arching this neck so that she can scissor it into the withers because they should have an arched neck and it should flow into the withers, your shoulder blades. But that's what's, what's kind of unique about working on a dog you, you can put them into the, the shape you need um, if you do it gently. Um, and it does help you to set in some of those lines. Standing from behind gives her a different perspective. Yeah, and I can look to make sure I'm not giving her a pinched back neck. I'm not making her look like a teepee. Stay here. <laughs> Come back down from the top. Blend into my withers. Okay, Sue's going to do the other side and then we'll bring everything together so both sides match. Good job, little And then we'll finish girl. up her eyebrows and her fall. 